Shalom, Yeshua. I'm going to give me infinite honors. Tower with Heavenly Father and our great King, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Hara Karkadash. Double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahweh Shah, pushing the true cross of four winds in this final hour, making their calling and elections assured by abounding this labor of love. Shalom to you, brothers. Uh, I was just going down my feed and I bumped into this video by uh, this Sakari, New Jersey. New York count. And um for the most part, the guy, you know, they 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 give these titles that are uh real year for entertainment, you know, so I'm guilty. I wanted to see what Karen was talking about when I seen the title. All right. I went to it for entertainment purposes and um when I was looking at it, the vast majority of the video was at a fine. The guy wasn't going off to the right or to the left like they do a lot of times in the scripture. Uh you know, they was getting on Karen. She was, you know, in the full-fledged spirit of an Edomite, uh, arrogant, prideful demon. But uh, something transpired that uh, would never happen with men, a great millstone, that had the truth. They understand had the truth of the scriptures and all to rightly divide them. He, he kept antagonizing Karen. Well, he, he wasn't antagonizing. I take that back. They were dialoguing the whole time she was up there. And then Karen went to the side and went her phone and pulled out a scripture. So before she pulled out that scripture, he was talking to her. They were going back and forth. But he just started ignoring her all of a sudden. And if I'm wrong, may the most I have mercy on me. Uh, but my personal opinion is... I. When she pulled out that scripture, I don't think he knew how to defend it or to rightly divide to shed, <coughs> shed light on it. And the scriptures is uh, Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, where it say the father's sins will not fall on the son because he had just got through bringing out uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, where it say the sins of the father will uh, fall on the son. So those are what you would look at if you don't have circumcised eyes and ears, they look like they're two contrary scriptures. So I was like, well, damn, you're going to start ignoring it. You ain't been ignoring it. Break it down for us. Share light for your viewers that's looking like I'm looking. All right. And he never did. He just started ignoring it. And ignoring it is a defensive mechanism. You ain't been ignoring it. So I'm going to let this clip play and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do what he should have did through the spirit and power of your high body, Shema Roshai, for edification's sake. And that's why uh, our Heavenly Father has put the spirit on the elders, the man, to go from these different camps, man, and showing the, the people that un, under these guys that they need to come with sound doctrine is, man. All right? We have an unction. We have an anointing to know how to rightly divide these scriptures. We prophesy in part, but when it comes to these scriptures, man, you, you shouldn't be out there teaching, you know, if you are... Uh, can't rightly divide them. You have to be able to defend the gospel, no matter what how they come at you. You know, you got to be well rounded. So I'm about to uh, let the clip play, and then I'm gonna uh, funnel it through the scriptures. Now check them out now. You know, you, you could go look at the video if you want. That's how he was dealing with her. Him and her were going back and forth the whole dialogue. Now watch. She pulls to the side. And see, look what Cal, he calling the Kathleen. In other words, you know how we be, Jake B. That's just like saying Karen. Now watch what she does. Before before she uh, went in her phone and pulled out, I, I got it. I bought it to the point where she just went straight into in her phone to bring out the scripture. But before that, he was dialoguing. They were going back and forth. He was cutting up with the scriptures. She was getting angry. You know what I'm saying? Anytime an eater might hear something they don't like, you know, they they pull that uh, white power card bullshit. And um, he was dialoguing until this, until this. Now, all of a sudden, he, he uh, started ignoring her. You know, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. See, now she's not talking anymore. She's looking for the scripture. Right now, right here, she's looking for that scripture. Now, let's see what happened when she finds it. Did America get built on blood? It did, right? She don't want to answer because she knows she got it. Her blood, the blood is the land. Blood defiles the land. And whose blood is on this? The Native Americans. The blacks, right? The Hispanics are on 
this land right now that you're walking on that you don't belong. Read, and neither do you. Read. She she had something. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein. And the land can't be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by what? But by the blood of him that shed it. But by the blood of him that shed it. I like you to read this aloud from the Bible. Ezekiel 18 and 12. I got a fellow one. Let's get it. Ezekiel. See, now, now, she she's not combative. She's not being combative. Uh, she came in a respectful manner, and she's doing what anybody would do. All right, that's what most people do. Or these either mice do. They say, uh, because she she got up there screaming in her feelings. I'm not going to get judged for my ancestors did. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So for her to defend herself more, she went and got that scripture. All right. Now, when she pulls out the scripture, it's our job as men of the Lord to rightly divide it because she's mangling it. She's not using that scripture in the proper context. You don't just jump over the scripture. Not a script that not Ezekiel 18 and 20 is a hot potato to you. Nah, give her what she want. All right. Give her what the fuck she came for. Show her how she's misunderstanding that passage. But let's see what he does. Nah, don't stutter. The book of Ezekiel 37 and verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. New York City. 25. 25. Verse 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given them. And one day we're going to dwell in the land that God gave us. Unto Jacob. Unto Jacob, my servant. Now, before that, it wasn't no get out the way, you know. Now, he did say we're going to bring it out, but he's not going to bring it out. <laughs> he's not going to bring it out, all right? He's going he gonna to start getting antagonized at her. That was her second time coming to ask him, you know. I'm going to let a little bit play because she's going to get to the point where she's going to ask him a third time and he's going to start screaming at her and she's going to leave. And then when she leaves, he's going to start screaming, the wicked flee with no man pursue him. Nah, man, that's cowardly what you did, what he did. And how he did it. All right. She bought the scripture. You ignored her. She said, you ain't want to deal. You don't want to look bad. Not her. You're supposed to be the professional out there. Wherein their fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein. Even they and their children. Right. And their so one children's day we're, children. One day we're going to get our land back. One day we're going to be in the land that we rightfully own. Right. Go back and go to verse 27. Verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. I right, know for everybody. Shall be with them. Be them, the Israelites, read. Yeah, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. My people. I'll be their God, and they shall be my people, read. And the heathen. And the heathen, right? Wait, 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 wait. If this is all inclusive, why is God separating his people and the heathen? If this was all inclusive, but it's not. It's only for the Israelites, only for blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. That's what God's doing. And, that, and that's just the truth. Well, I like you I'm going to bring it out. You can't even wait. You don't want nothing up here. You don't want nothing up here. This is what white people are doing for you. Because I'm white, I'm going to tell you what to do. I just said, if you have, you got the big ass dumbo ears. Listen, I just told you that I'm going to bring it out. Have some patience. You see, now this this will make him a lame. When she was just up there vain jangling, talking bullshit, you engage with her. Whatever she said, you responded to her. But when she comes with a scripture, now she got to wait. Now she got to get in line when actually she's the only one up there engaging with you. Come on, man. We had the sermon, man. Brothers on our uh, brothers that had a spirit dwelling with them, they could see, man, you didn't want to deal with Ezekiel 18 chapter, man. You know, and I'm not doing this to embarrass him or whatnot, but hey, we got to rightly divide these script, these scrolls, man. All right? He got a lot of people looking at that video, and they going to, if, if I was uh, just coming into faith, and then she brings, she said, clearly said, Ezekiel 18 and 20, where you can hear it, I'm going to go read it. And when I read it, and I heard him bring out Isaiah 14 chapter, I'm going to be like, well, damn, they saying two different things, Okay? So I would be looking for the prophet to rightly divide it because scripture doesn't, uh, you can't use scripture to combat scripture. 
All right. That's what the heathen do. That's what the unlearned do. Scripture synchronizes each other. They back each other up. All right. So through the uh, spirit and power, Yahweh Shem Amashah, let's get it. All right. Now, I'm going to start off in Isaiah because he bought that out first. All right. And you see the title of that video. If you want to go back and look at it in its entirety, you can see that uh, he was dialoguing with her. He never told her to get back and wait. Long as she was scoffing and talking shit and being in her feelings, he was he was dealing with her. But as soon as she bought her scripture out, now she got to go in line and he don't want to talk to her no more. But this is the passage he bought out. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare a slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. And when she heard this, she got real emotional. That's what made her go get Ezekiel 18. All right? That they do not rise nor oppress the land nor fulfill the face of the world with cities. All right? So in this passage, it's plainly saying that what the what America's forefathers did, that their descendants is going to have to fit the bill. All right? The sins of the fathers is going to fall down on their descendants. All right? Plainly saying that. All right, so to defend her case, she went to this passage. Uh, this is Ezekiel 18 and 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. All right, these scriptures, for face value, they say, two different things, all right? They look contrast to one another, all right? Now, you can't get mad at her for when she reads that, all right? She's unlearned. She got uncircumcised ears. This is not for her, but we got people that, uh, Israelites that see that video. They're the ones that need to get edified, all right? So with these scriptures saying the same thing, how do you rightly divide it where it can make sense, all right? And let's see, all right? When America, when you look at America and what America has done, America uh, raped and robbed this land from the Native Americans, okay? And then what did they do? Then they bought the tribe of Judah over here and put them in hardcore slavery, sodomized them, bug broke them, split up families, did all these wicked things for America to become the greatest uh, uh, nation on the planet. Now, what did the, the descendants of those uh, people that did those things do. They furthered this enterprise. All right? Let's see what they were supposed to do if they were righteous. Okay? They didn't do it. This is how the sins of the father don't fall on you. If your father, old wicked ass, dirtbag nigga, all right, this is what you do so his sins don't fall on you. And this is why the inhabitants here in America they're, they're going to fit the bill of their descendants because they furthered the enterprise. They didn't res restore back what was stolen, all right? They didn't give uh, restore to the, uh, what was stolen. They didn't make things right. They didn't, they didn't uh, pay these people what they stole sevenfold back, all right? This is Ezekiel 33 and 15. If the wicked restore the pledge, all right? Restore, Gad, give Gad his land back. That's how... What your forefathers did don't fall back on you. Give Gad his land back. All, all the work, turmoil, all the labor that the descendants of these slaves did and built up America, pay their descendants for all that labor they did. All right? That's how you don't, the sins of your father don't fall on you. Give again what that he had robbed. Walk in the statues of life without committing equity, iniquity. He should surely live. He should not die. Now, did the descendants of the slain overs or the forefathers of America do that? No. They passed more laws, more grievous laws. They added on to what their forefathers did. And all of the white people, so-called white people here in America, they're benefiting from what their forefathers did. They're not going against what their forefathers did. All right? When they hear my country tears of thee, they get up, they take off their hats, and they put their hands on their heart. When they hear the Star Spangled Banner, they stand up in honor 
of what their forefathers did. So the sins of their fathers are going to fall on them because guess what? They didn't go against what their forefathers did. They furthered it and they honor it. That's how the sins of your father fall on you. Now let's go in the scriptures and show how the sins of your father don't fall on you. All right? It has account of righteous men of old uh, did away with the wickedness that their fathers did. This is uh, 2 Chronicles 28 and 19. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, the king of Israel. For he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. All right? So he made Israel to worship other powers and go off to the right and to the left. All right? This is what the king Ahaz did. All right? Then we're going to turn around and see what his son behind him did. All right? Did he walk in the footsteps of his father or did he undo all the wickedness that his father did? Okay? And Tigger Peneser, king of Assyria, came unto him and distressed him, but strengthened him not. For, ah for Ahaz took away the portion out of the house of Yahweh, so he went and took the precious thing and out of the house of the king and out of the princess and gave it to the king of Assyria. That's wicked as hell. But he helped him not. And in a time of distress did he trespass, trespass yet more against Yahweh. This is that King Ahaz. So this was a wicked nigga. All right. He was he was a high idolater. All right. Just uh uh transgression the law, Yahweh Bashim uh on the right and on the left. Okay. For he sanctified unto the gods of Damascus, all right, a high time idolater, which smote him. And he said, because the gods of the king of Syria helped them, therefore I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. All right. So he did the worst thing a human being, an Israelite can do. All right. He went whoring at, after other powers, but they were the ruin of him and all of Israel. All right. So let's see if his son in Israel did what he was doing. Okay. All right. Let's see if his sins was going to fall on his son. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. All right, so he just kicked the priests out, shut down the house. All right, it just went all the way to the left and made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoke to anger the Lord, the God of his fathers. All right, now let's go to the next chapter and see what his son after him did, Okay. Hezekiah began, this is his son, Hezekiah began to reign. And when he was five and 20 years old, he reigned nine and 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, Abiah, all right, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? So this is how the sins of the father don't fall on the son. All right, we about to see all of the high places his dad had put up. He told them bitches down. All right, so he was delivered from his righteousness. He didn't further what his dad did. So that showed she bought that scripture out and she didn't understand it, bitch. When you hear when that, bitch, when you hear that fucking Star Spangled Banner, you stand up, bitch. You're a patriot. You love your America. You're benefiting from the, the wicked atrocities your ancestors did. Are you ready to restore everything you work for and give it to a, a black family? All right. Are you ready to all of the riches that America has accumulated? Are you ready to re, in this land restore it back to the, the Native Americans? That same white bitch going to say no, man. She's going to say no. OK, so that, that means you have to partake in the sins of your father. Uh, uh, the, the scripture she brought out in Ezekiel is null and void for her because she's not she's not ready to get up, give up the riches and the spoils of war that was uh, gotten ill gotten that ill gotten gain that her forefathers got. She's not ready to re relinquish that. OK. He in the first of his reign in the first month opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Remember, his daddy closed them. You see? His daddy closed the, the doors of the house of the Lord, but he opened them and repaired them. And he bought the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in the, into the east street. And he said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify yourself, not uh, yourselves, and sanctify the house of Yahweh, the power of our fathers. 
and carry forth out of the filthiness of the holy place. All right? So all of the things his father set up, he carried that filthiness out. He tore that shit down. For our fathers have trespassed. You see what I'm saying? So he wasn't doing what his forefathers did. He wasn't carrying on their enterprise. All right? He destroyed it and done that which is evil in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Abishai, our power, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of Yahweh, and turned their backs. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burnt the incense, nor offered offer burnt offerings in the holy place, unto Yahweh, the power of Yasharala. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and have delivered them to trouble and astonishment, to the hissing, as you see your eye with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with Yahweh Shemawasha, the power of Yasharala, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. All right, my sons, be now not now negligent. For Yahweh have chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that, that you should minister him and burn incense. You see what I'm saying? So they did what was right in the side of the law of uh, Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay? All right? They, they, they went against what, uh, they went against what uh, their forefathers did. And when they went against what their forefathers did, all right, that stopped the blood of their forefathers from falling on them. And that's what that guy should have did, man. And my hypothesis is he didn't know how to do that. And 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 my my humble opinion, and and, and nothing wrong with that. But admit it. Don't don't be like you just ignoring her, you know? You know, don't put on no show and, and start shouting her down when you were engaging with her. You know, rightly divided. We have to rightly divide the scriptures to feed the lambs, to edify the lambs. So, uh, Abba Rajah Zaydus is edifying to the hearers. I want to get infinite honors to Yahabah Shema Shai, double honors to our teachers, the, our, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutations to my fellow laborers in Yahabah Shai. Kwame Asherala, Abba Abba Baba.